It's time for a little comedy, a little content, and a lot of conversation. It's the Gino Jones Show, exclusively right here on YouTube. And now here's your host, Gino Jones. Hello, welcome. It's time for the Gino Jones Show. Thank you for watching today. Yeah, uh, I'm Gino Jones. See the sign? Yeah. I'm, I'm here. That's me. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Happy New Year to you. Uh, this is episode two. I'm going to have a sit-down conversation, part two of it, with my man T.J. Phillips. He's a radio icon. We call this segment in black or white coming up in a few minutes. So, it's a new year, so uh, how's those New Year's resolutions working out? Shawnee, how are your New Year's resolutions working out for you pretty good? That's my producer in the back. Hey. Hey. So, uh, speaking of New Year's. So, my wife asked me, she said, baby, what's your New Year's resolution? And I said, honey, my New Year's resolution is to make love to you more in 2020. Then I turned to her and I said, baby, what's your New Year's resolution? She looked me dead in my eye and said, to have more migraines in 2020. So I have to be bothered with your ass. I said, well, damn, happy New Year to you too. So. I hope your new year is going a little better than mine is so far. All right, speaking of love, or maybe not getting any love, uh, comedian Lonnie Love, you see her on the talk show The Real. So apparently she stirred up a lot of controversy. You got a lot of folk, got them in their feelings. She said basically that black men think because they have money and power now, I don't know how many black men she know, but the majority of black men in America don't have the money and the power. The men who have the money and the power in America are not black men, but I digress. So she said black men think that because they have money and power, I guess the ones that she knows, think that they can treat women any kind of way and that black men, according to Lonnie Love, do not know how to have a faithful relationship. And Lonnie, I said, apparently you didn't make a phone call to Donald Trump, Bill Clinton, Hugh Hefner, or Harvey Weinstein's wives because they would have told you that faithful thing does not know any color. Trust me, not at all. Cheating don't have a color. Cheating comes in all color. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. Guess what? Cheating didn't have a gender. Uh, you know, I wasn't always married. Now, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna name any names to protect the guilty, but uh, oh yeah, men ain't the only one to cheat too, uh, ladies. I hate to let you in on that secret, but I know from back in the day because, like I said, I wasn't always married. Uh, don't worry. Like I said, I'm not gonna name any names to protect the guilty. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Coming up next, part two of my sit-down conversation about race and economics, social political commentary, profound, and I, I think you really, part two, we got some really, really powerful comments, so you don't want to miss it with my man T.J. Phillips in black or white, coming up next on the Gino Jones Show. <laughs> it's just a small group. Very small. With the money and the power. And really, they trick us and make us think that the reason that your job got shipped over to Taiwan or South mm -hmm. Korea or somewhere in Central America because it was a black dude or a black woman or, or a, a Mexican, Mexican or, or a Muslim yeah. right. or, or someone from right. the LGBT community right. uh, or, or somebody like that. But no, it was actually somebody that looks like you. Exactly. That sat in a boardroom with a spreadsheet and made decisions about your future. So as a matter of fact, uh, you know, not to get too heavy, but we, we've had this conversation. And if you think about when Dr. King was assassinated, mm -hmm. and a lot of people, there's a, there's a book by, uh, I think, uh, William Pepper, talks about the assassination, Google, a William Pepper uh, book about the real reason why Dr. King was assassinated. But if you think about it, what was Dr. King, his, he made somewhat of a pivot. He was still uh, advocating for civil rights. Right. But it had kind of merged with economic justice. Yep. As a matter of fact, when he was murdered, he was in Memphis, Tennessee. For the trash collectors. Sanitation workers. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he, he had been talking about basically 
uh, poor working class, uh, people like a, a background many people had where you grew up. Yeah. In, in Appalachia. Yeah. Poor whites. He said in Appalachia, would get together with, uh, they didn't call them uh, Hispanics, but basically uh, the Mexican American Latino community. Right. And, and working class and poor uh, African Americans because there's another misnomer that like every black all black people ain't poor and every <laughs> <laughs> all black people are not on welfare that's a whole other conversation but and, it's part of that narrative that yeah. has been fed and he was it was like this whole poor people's movement when he was trying to build a coalition mm -hmm. between uh, the Appalachian white right. poor working class right. white poor working class African Americans Native Americans Hispanic Right. That is when he became a threat. To that is when he the people was assassinated. Yeah. So you can call it coincidence if you want to, but it's just ironic that when he made that somewhat of a pivot, people said, wait a minute, hold on now. Yeah. This is going a little too far. Yes. You become a threat to yes. me. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, and, and I certainly didn't mean to drive us down that path because we could spend all day going yeah, through yeah. this. But, well, but, but I think we, we're living in that kind of climate now, we are. and we need to have. And I think it's great that you and I can have this conversation that they can see a black guy and a white guy sit down and have this conversation because you know we've had this conversation. Oh yeah, yeah. So many times, you know, um, um, among ourselves. Well, I'll tell you how little we know about each other as somebody who you're different than me okay how little i know one of my best friends to this day in the world um, was a black kid who was a year older than everybody else in my class he had, his father died and he got held back a year and nobody was really friendly to him and he and i hit off hit it off and we grew up together we we lived life together and uh, I lost him for a few years when when I went to the military and work and whatever and I didn't realize until the last 10 years uh, and I found it out on Facebook um, that he and I never thought about it he, he and I never went to a movie together because the one screen theater in my little town uh, didn't you grew up in Tennessee, in a small town in Tennessee. East Tennessee, yeah. Just, uh, w w was it east or north of Knoxville? North, northeast of Knoxville, Knoxville. yeah. Okay. Um, so you were near the border, right? Was that the border? Yeah, there's Tennessee, North Carolina, North Carolina Virginia, Virginia okay. to, right up in the corner. In the mountains, you said? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that one screen theater, the Miss Miller, who owned it, uh, would not allow black, black people wow. and white people to sit in the same room. Uh, and I didn't know it. I, it never entered my mind that that was going on. I did not see it because I didn't need to see it. You know, I was taking dates and I was going to the movie right. and see, whatever. And you, you know, you didn't think of no think big of deal. It's like, yeah. But somebody they tore the theater down and and there was a, a picture of it circulating through our group, and I put it up and I said, oh, so many great memories in that place. And Robert responded. I wish I could say the same. Yeah. I was upstairs with the door locked so we couldn't get down. With the door locked? Yeah, she locked it. I mean, if there'd been a fire, they'd probably I was just all, about to say, what? I, yeah. But I didn't know, I didn't see any of that, even though I was living it. Right. Um, and it wasn't until much later that I really came to realize, uh, you know, I was made to join the social organizations um, because... If I was going to be in management, I had to rub elbows with those in power. Right. Well, I joined one, found out that I couldn't bring this friend of mine who was black uh, because they just, they didn't allow. We don't, you know, we can't. He can visit, but he can't become a member here. Um, so I quit. Um, and a few years later, I went into another social group organization. Good people. But... No, you can't. You can't have a. We don't have black members. We can't do that. They got their own thing over there. So I quit that one too. And what I caught myself doing for a lot of years was walking away from stuff that I didn't like, mm -hmm. not doing anything to try to change it. I just walked away from I got you. it. And I got you. it it took me time to figure out, you know, what kind of 
what I could do. So you realized, because now there's a term that she uses called privilege, which is real. Exactly. But there, was, there wasn't a term for it. No. You didn't have vocabulary for it. I didn't know I had it. Yeah. And you know what? You talked about history. I think that's so important, TJ, is that I, I'd recommend everybody. And I don't work for the New York Times, so they're not cutting me a check. They could. You know, you want to consult me and teach you. Yeah, we, we, we do it. Sign us up. Uh, the 1619 Project. Mm -hmm. And it really gives a real accurate, honest. Some people may be uncomfortable, but, you know, the truth is there, there's lots of our history. Yeah. That should make you feel uncomfortable. Absolutely. Because, I mean, and... You can love your country. It's like you can, you can love a family member, but be critical if you see them doing something wrong or mistreating somebody. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you really love somebody, the true sign of loving somebody is trying to correct their behavior. If you see them going down the wrong path, yeah. or if you see them hurting somebody, you're like, wait a minute, we don't do this in this... No, oh, I right. love you, but I do not love this behavior, mm -hmm. and it is wrong, and it is not who we are at, at our core. It, we correct the conduct, correct the character, but the 1619 Project, I, I recommend everybody uh, read it. It was brilliantly done, and it, it basically traces, um, it starts with the first 20 or so African slaves. Yeah coming over to area around Jamestown, Virginia in August of 1619. It talk, talks about how the slave trade in America uh, was, it was like the number one industry, like what tech is oh, now, it was huge. Or, or Wall yeah. Street. Yep, that's where they made their money. Slavery yeah. was the main industry in America. Right. And that's where America generated all of its wealth. On the backs of slaves, right from day and, one, and and the genocide, because we can't forget Native Americans. You mentioned oh. Native Americans, the genocide of Native Americans who were here. I'll give you an example of how history has whitewashed everything. Um, our concept of Thanksgiving that these people landed and the Native Americans came out and welcomed them to their country and they had the so feast. About a Corn and yeah, and, and they had this feast of peace together, thankfulness, and da da da. That never happened. No, that never happened. They would go out, and uh, the settlers would go out and wipe out a, a, a community, a tribe, come back and celebrate with a feast. Um, the Indians were never sitting there at the table with them; they were generally dead, dead exactly somewhere else. Um, but that became Thanksgiving as we know it, and and it's celebrating something that it was really ugly, right? And you know, it, but that history that you t we talked about is, is so important because that that miseducation yes has allowed a small hand. I, I've said this for years, and you and I have had this conversation: hate, fear, bigotry. Racism, misogyny, sexism, homophobia, uh, religious like Islamophobia yeah. is big business. Well, that's it what keeps them in power, man. If you and I are fighting over anything, be it color or religion or whatever it is, that means they are in control. We can never get together as long as we're fighting over crap that they throw at us. And the, just to keep us pissed off. And the sad part is that we all have more in common than we do different. Absolutely. We all worry about we want our kids to get the best education and how can we come up with the money to send them to it. We want our kids to be healthy. Yeah. We want to make sure that if they if they get a cold or a cough that we can take them to the doctor to make sure that they're okay. If we have elderly parents, we want our parents to live in dignity. Uh, live with dignity sure. and, and a decent uh, quality of, of life. We just want to be the best versions of ourselves and, and just be free to, as they say, just let me live and, and let us live our life and, um, you know, without uh, uh, fear of, 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 of you know, I, I don't want to have to fear when I see a police car behind me, okay, a a am I Am I going to live to get yeah. through this? Am yeah. I going to live to go home and see my wife and, yeah. and my daughter? And, you know, it's a different experience for you. you know, I was going to say, I can't, I can't even put myself in that place. 
Um, I can't put myself in the place of a woman who's leaving the office after dark and walking through a parking yes. garage to her car. I can't understand what she feels because I can't. No, but it, it, it can never happen to me. Right. But um, I, I, I want to make that woman safe. I care, but I'll never feel it. I'll never feel what you feel in the morning when you get up and look in the mirror. I hope you enjoyed that. TJ Phillips, my buddy, thank you so much. Uh, stay tuned for more of the segment in black or white. We got more conversation. We're just getting this thing started. All right, listen, Happy New Year. I want to thank you for tuning in. You know, every year, so many people make a resolution to change themselves. So I got an idea. In 2020, let's make this resolution. Make a resolution to be yourself. Be the best version of yourself. Nobody can beat you being the best version of you. You know, in Vegas, they say always bet on black. I don't gamble, but I say in life, always bet on you. Because like I said, nobody, absolutely, positively, nobody can beat you being the best version of yourself. So you just got to figure out who you are, what you really want in your life, and don't allow somebody else's perception to become your reality and don't live anybody else's dream. Thanks for watching the Gino Jones Show. Until next time, I holla. Subscribe and tune in to the next episode of the Gino Jones Show exclusively right here on YouTube.